regardless. He never said how you feel. Notice there was no how much you feel. That, that's, that's immaterial. But you love God for who he is no matter what. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. You know who said that? Right, Job. Job 19.25, probably one of the most powerful verses. I know my Redeemer lives. And this was during a time when Job was stripped of everything in this world. His money, his wealth, he had a miserable wife that was nagging after him to curse God and die. His friends were no support. And yet he said, I know my Redeemer lives. That is faith. And in the end, Job was justified over his friends because of that faith. Got it? That's what I'm talking about. That is maturity in the spiritual life. Okay? I saw your hand. Yes. Oh, I like that. I like that. Um, she said, God loves you not because you're good, but because God is good. Right? God loves you. That's right. God is good. Okay. Because I've got news for you. The scriptures themselves says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He loved us first. Therefore, our only response is to love him back. And that was the whole message of the Song of Solomon that we did. God's initiation of his love for us pulls us into his own family from where we are. Our only natural response is to love him back with everything that we have. So just, just, Well, I don't know what your New Year's resolutions are, but I want you to be a, a, a holier, more Christian you. That's my prayer. And so I'm just giving you some tips on how to make you saints. And to warn you that as you do it, don't expect love and roses to follow around you. If anything, expect thorns and rocks. Yes. Yes. And don't be surprised when it happens. Don't be surprised and just realize, okay, Jesus, I don't understand this. I'm trying to love you and I'm getting all this opposition. Jesus, I don't understand. But Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I love you. End of discussion. Got it? Yes. That's correct. That's why we need the grace of God. Beside grace and knowledge. Beside knowledge, Christ is the Lord. Before you can live, believe Him so we can have life in His name, you have to have love. Yes. And love is not just for Jesus, but for your brother and sister. Yes. For you, yes. For you, you knew. Yes. Love is of you. Yes. Not just hate. Yes, and 
I would say that in the, the grace and through the sacraments that you get, that's where you get the grace to love. Even those that are not lovable. Correct. Or hard to love, shall we say. And how do you do that? It's only through Jesus that you do that. And that's whom you receive that in that grace. So you're absolutely right. You can have all the knowledge of the Bible you want. And if you don't love, it's worthless. But that's where the grace comes from. The grace through the sacraments that we get grows the love in our hearts so that we can be like Jesus to others. Because he was the, big, the greatest lover of our souls that we'll ever know. That's how we got eternal life. Yes. Eternal life. In the Gospel of Luke, that, uh, in the parable of the, um, of the, um, no, no. In the parable that Jesus said that uh, the good Samaritan. Yes. The expert of the law comes and asks you, is how do I inherit the eternal life? Mm -hmm. Because what the Torah teach you? What did you learn from? Deuteronomy. Yes, you got it. Because he was thinking, do I only love those people in my inner circle, my literal neighbors, the next door people, people who are like me, those who are in Israel? And his response is, no, you love those who you didn't even consider loving, those who hate you. Ouch. Yes. And I've said this before, and I, I'll say it again. I heard a marvelous retelling of the story of the Good Samaritan that helps illustrate this ethnic hatred that the Jews of Jesus' day had towards Samaritans. Because they didn't consider them worthy. They weren't Jews, they weren't Gentiles, they were half-breeds that were in their own land. And they wouldn't have anything to do, a, a good devoted Jew would not have anything to do with them. You know? And the parable, the retelling of the parable is this. You have a, a neo-Nazi skinhead who is robbed and laying on the side of the road. And, 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 and another neo-Nazi comes by and sees him and just passes him by. Okay? A Ku Klux Klansman comes by and sees him and goes, and, you know, goes by. And then a black man comes sees him in the ditch, takes him, puts him in his car, and drives him to the emergency room. And tells them that uh, if he can't pay for it, just let me know and I'll take care of it. You just make sure that he's, he's doing all right. That's your neighbor. That's what Jesus was telling them about Samaritans. And he was pointing out they were acting like the neo-Nazis. You know what I'm saying? And he goes, you treat them like that. And that's the kind of love of neighbor I'm asking of you. Got it? That did not settle well with the Pharisees. Because they wanted to hate the Romans. They wanted to hate these others. And we are so much better than they are. <laughs> right? Wrong. Ah, you see, now it starts to get the rubber hits the road. That's the kind of, that's the standard of love that God expects. Because you know why? I've got news for you, my brothers and sisters. God loves you as much as he loves the neo-Nazi skinhead. Brace yourself. He loves you as much as he loves 
that woman who went to the clinic and had an abortion. Because she has so many children and we are one of these. The point is that God loves everyone, not just the good. He loves everyone and he wants all of them, all, to be in his heaven with him. Do you understand that? All of them. Not just you because you're so nice and good and I go to church every day and I pray my rosary five times a day and I'm this and this and I'm that and that and this and this and that and that. You're no better than the Pharisees if you think yourself that way. Not because you are us, No, 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 no. Doesn't matter. God loves you as much as he loves those others that you don't think are worthy. You hear what I'm saying? That's what Jesus was telling them in the parable of this Good Samaritan. And, it, and, and that's the kind of love he expects out of all of us. All of us. Because we are to love like God loves. And if God loves everyone, yes? Yes. Then we are to love everyone as well. And what's in the Bible, the prostitutes are going in. Yes, yes, yes. No, because it is not the well who need a physician, but those who are sick. And there's a sick and dying world out there. And if you have love in your heart, like Jesus does, you're going to share it with them. You're going to share it with them. But you have to have that experience yourself. That's what I was trying to get through in our study of the book of the Song of Songs. We have to fall in love with God first. We have to do that. We have to experience that love so that we can share it in the same way that he shared it with us. Amen? Amen. So there's again another New Year's resolution. And I'm off on the beaten path. But it's not the beaten path. You know what I'm saying? This is the whole purpose of why we come here and study the scripture so that we can be more like Jesus, so we can grow in the knowledge and in the grace, so that we can do both. It's not either or, it's both. And by doing so, we love God and our fellow man more, better, okay? That is the whole point. That's what's going to make us saints. And I'm telling you, the only way if you want a fast track to that, devote your life to the Holy Spirit. Pray to the Holy Spirit. Say a novena to the Holy Spirit because he is the powerhouse that will change us to be like Jesus. He will change us to be like Jesus if we only let him. Yes. Yes, it's both. 
The way that Jesus dealt with it is this. When he wrote on the ground and said, he who was without sin cast the first stone, everyone left, right? Who was left? Jesus and the woman. And then he looked to her and he said what? Woman, where are your accusers? And she said none. And he goes, neither do I condemn you. But did it stop there? No. No, no. what did he say? Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. It's both. That is how Jesus affected the lives of He didn't say, you're going to hell, woman. Get it together now. Right? No. He says, I'm not going to condemn you. You know why he wasn't going to condemn her? Because she felt condemned enough. Amen? Amen? Forget the people around her. She probably felt embarrassed and guilty and all of all of that. You know, and, and you know Jesus could read her heart. He knew that. She knew that. I'm not going to condemn you for that. You know what you did is wrong. Now stop doing it. Right? You have a choice. I'm giving you your freedom and dignity back. That's the under message there. That's the under message. I'm giving you your freedom and your dignity back. Go and sin no more. That's how we address. That's how we approach people in sin. And not can don't what they've done, but neither do we not love them for, what, for who they are. Creations. God's creation. Yes? Yes, yes. I mean, I do this with some of my tougher students. Uh, you, know, I, you know, I've been having a tough time with some of my students. You've heard about this. I've been writing referrals and all this, and I don't know what to do. But, you know, when they come, one of them, before the end of the semester, came to me and said, you know, I want to get my grade. What can I do? And I said, well, you haven't lied to me so far, and until I see otherwise, I'm going to trust what you say. So I'm going to give you another chance. And that's how I approach it. Because I think everyone is redeemable. 